Hello guys, this is Paul from Pain Perdu, and with this video I'm going to start a new series about hidden tricks in LSDJ that are probably in the manual but not necessarily gone over in enough detail or just cool tricks that people have found through experimentation but that aren't necessarily well documented. You're gonna go and say, "Hey, just read the manual and get good and experiment." Well, this is true. I'm not going. I'm not exactly going to show huge breakthroughs or super cool techniques. Just simple things and simple tricks that I think are really practical in terms of organization, ergonomics, and overall practicality of LSDJ, and that I wish I had known when I started out. So here goes. In this first installment, I'm going to talk about a very simple thing called the instrument re-triggering. So, some of you may know already, but you don't necessarily need to have an instrument value next to a note for it to produce sound. So let's look at an example. Okay, I have here a very simple standard pulse instrument with a rising envelope. It starts from one and rises up at the speed of V. So this, this goes like this. If I trigger it every note, you're going to notice that every time a note starts, the rising envelope goes down and up. This is because what the instrument value does is it reads the settings from here and triggers it every time it reads the instrument value. This means that if I delete the instrument value, my envelope will start from here and keep rising even though a new note is inputted. This is really important to know that instrument and note are actually independent. Well, you need first settings for the note to actually exist. But once it's triggered, you don't need to input it on every note. And so this is a nice technique for you to save space, save blocks, and save CPU usage. And this can also be used in a number of ways, very creatively and very musically. So just like I said, if I trigger the envelope, if I trigger this instrument at every note, this is going to sound like this. Rising at every note, rising at every instrument value. If I only trigger it at every two notes, this is, this is what it's going to sound like. It's going to keep rising even though the note is changed. And this gives you a lot of really nice options. Like if you want to have a standard side chainy ARP, like I'm going to copy paste that. Here the instrument is triggered every note, so this is gonna go But if I decide to trigger it only on the beat, I'm gonna have a rising arpeggio that goes down on every beat. And you can even add a bit little bit of flavor with some L commands. Come on, work, copy paste. There you go. This is what it's gonna sound like. <laughs> okay. This doesn't work as intended. Faster, 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 faster. Is this a, yes, this is a high frequency pattern. So there you go. Nice legato arpeggio with a rising envelope that only needs one instrument value each time you want to make it rise. This is interesting in a number of ways. You're going to notice that inside the instrument values is also the table information. This is part of the instrument value, so this is equally triggered. Let's make on a standard table, for example, what could be in my standard table here? 
let's say, you know, the, the standard bleep. Okay, so this is a bit hard to know what's going on. I'm gonna trigger it every note. And this is gonna sound, this is gonna trigger the, the bleepy octave transposition table every note. Just the same way it did with the envelope. Still has the envelope, you can hear it. And what we're gonna see, I'm going to change the envelope to something more telling like 8-4. If we do the same and trigger the instrument on every beat, this is gonna go down. A5 will be better. And the table will keep running as if it wasn't pre-triggered because it isn't, is it? It isn't pre-triggered. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prevent it from looping back because it's gonna be rhythmically inappropriate, I think. If I do that, this is what's gonna happen. Yeah, only because this is gonna make it repeat here indefinitely. So, if, so it's never gonna reach the end, so it's never gonna loop back. So here you can notice the table is only triggering when I trigger the instrument value. Prada, 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 prada. And this goes the same way, even though this is still the same instrument. It's just the, the instrument settings are not re-triggered, but this is, this is still instrument zero. And this goes the same way if I use an automate table. I think the most telling example would be the super standard LRLR automation table. For those of you who don't know, automate, what automate does is it's every time it reads an instrument value, I instead of having uh, the ticks go down and triggering the effects commands every tick, it's going to trigger them every instrument value. Not every note, but every instrument value. I'm going to dem demonstrate that here. If we have it on every note, this is going to go left, right, left, right, left, right. Really nice stereo effects to use musically. And the same goes if we actually trigger it every two notes. This is going to go left, left, right, right, even though the notes are still here. And if we pair that with a rising envelope, we can have really interesting effects. So that's how you that's how you can make interesting things with instruments tr triggering in the pulse channel. What I think is really more interesting than this is if we go to the wave channel and make a really long evolutive lead or bass instrument. Let's create something in the wave channel. New instrument, not zero, something completely new. This is your super bad bass. And I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna go with the same pattern. Sorry for the really awful sound, I'm gonna edit, edit this later. Select B, copy, select A, da 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 da. Okay, so in the wave channel, the instrument settings are really different. You still have the output, you still have the vibrato type, but instead of the envelope value, you have the synth value. And we want something that, for it to be really telling, we, we want something that ping pongs. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a, a cycle of wave frames that goes back and forth with F frames at the speed of four. So I'm going to use a bit less frame, let's say something like eight. And this is the number of ticks it takes for um, a wave frame to cycle to another. So that means if we take three ticks, this is going to be two wave frames per 16th notes. And I'm going to go in my main synth here, make a really smooth triangle wave with a low pass 
I'm going to start at volume 10. And let's push this to an old path with, uh, with Q value. And let, let's make this warp to a really gritty, really raw sounding. Well, this is not as raw as I would like it to be, but you get the idea. I want something smooth that goes into something raw. And because of where where is it? Because of this, I cannot actually hear the full range of wave cycles because it, the wave cycle is also retriggered by the instrument value. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to only trigger the instrument value every four notes. You can actually let, let it cycle through the whole the whole phrase. Oops, what happened there? Uh, it has no repeat. Okay. Don't forget to set your repeat value. <laughs> oh, nice. This is this gives it a little reflective edge. You can also do this every four notes. So the same kind of rising effect. We go so we go from some, something quiet to something loud. If we Use something a little bit lower. Maybe this is gonna sound familiar. So you can use this for bass a lot, also. The side chain and some such. But I think it's really interesting for leads because if you if you have something that cycles through waves really slowly, um, you can have rhythmically evolving waves that are really interesting. But then you're going to tell me, what about my kicks? I want my kicks. And yes, everybody has kicks in the wave channel. So let's make them. Let's make a kick. I usually like my kicks at C6 because it has it starts really high and then it goes down really fast. Okay, speed running, a really easy kick, manual, triangle. I like them at 40. Uh, standard triangle wave, and I forgot the table. I kill them at five just be just before the next sixteenth nose triggers, and I let's just take some. Nice. Okay. Super standard, super bad kick, just for the sake of it. Um. I'm gonna have it every beat actually. Don't forget to retrigger your nose because actually if I had not inputted this, this would still be instrument two. So this kind of gets in the way of what I was telling earlier about the wave instrument being able being able to evolve freely. If you have the kick, that it, that is to say a new instrument, you will have to retrigger your lead. It still evolves, but it doesn't have as much space as we would like to. So what we can do here is go here and set the length, set the number of frames to say three because it has three. Or may maybe maybe six. No, let's let's say three, and set the tick frame speed at six, so that it evolves exactly. Every sixteenth note will be a different will be a different wave frame in the cycle. And it's and if my length is three, it's gonna go through the whole cycle in only three frames, so it's gonna evolve faster. Um so what we could do is you can actually hear that it's going at the exact tempo. Boom boom. exactly at 16th notes. So I'm going to transform this into a bass. So don't forget to delete your new instrument value because every time you edit a note it inputs the instrument value. Let's try this. Copy paste. something even grittier. Start here and I have 
Oops, this is the mess. Okay, there's no mirrors for you. Ugly. That's shit. There you have it. Something interesting that evolves exactly at the speed of 16th notes and that only requires one instrument value. You could actually, even though the notes change, what, what, what's important to notice here is that the evolution of the wave cycle is independent from the notes. If I had just this, it would sound like this. This way, I can still have the same kind of evolution. Let's make it a bit faster so that you can really notice it. Every 30 second notes, I'm gonna cycle through a frame, so six frames. Uh, this way, you're gonna hear it really nice. This is gonna go instead of going. Yow, yow, yow. This is gonna go like this. Yow, even though the notes change. You can actually use the retriggering super creatively. Here I'm just tr triggering it at the um, beginning. But I could do, for example, something like this. If, if I had the opposite, like something that starts super gritty and, and, and ends up being soft, we would have something like this. Let's just invert exactly what we did. Nice. So you see, so here we have actually an attack. And we could use this to our advantage rhythmically. For example, if we do this, the attack is going to be retriggered every time I input the one. So here you hear the you hear the blah 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 really clearly, whereas here you have one uh, one wobble for three notes. And do that like this one and three and one and three. Okay, so this is not may maybe the best sounding example, but it really gives you a good look at what you can do with instrument retriggering, both in the pulse and in the wave channel. So pair that with uh, carefully laid out effects, automated tables, whatever you have under in your trick bag. This also works for noise, but I, I have really no, no good telling example. Maybe if we use the S command. Okay, so the instrument for triggering is a very nice trick because you can use it in a very, um, you can very use it very creatively in a very wide number of uses. You can save spaces if you are out of blocks, you can save instruments slots, you can save CPU, you can save time, and you can use it very inventively musically, as I have shown. Don't forget to subscribe to our very new channel, I think this is our very first video. Uh, like the Pain Perdu page on Facebook, follow us on SoundCloud. Um, we're going to release some things really, really soon. We're going to open for Harley Likes Music in a few days, so I'm really excited. Thanks for watching this first video in the installment of the hidden LSDJ tricks. Please comment if there's something you would like us to cover in the next videos and offer constructive criticism. That would be really great because I know this is not the best setup I have. Um, this is really basic. It doesn't sound good. 
So if you have constructive criticism you want to offer us, please do so in the comment section below. This has been really fun for me. This is also way too long. But I hope you kept through it. I hope you kept watching it through the entire video. And I hope you found this interesting and informative. Thanks again. I've, I have said thanks way too many times. I am now stopping the recording. This was this was pulled from Pampadu. And see you next time.